finally, Chris Hyam. Uh, he graduated in 2004. He's currently a manager at Accenture. And um, I noticed him talking to, I think, all three of the computer science representatives who are here this morning, earlier on in the break. So uh, he works with the technology growth platform for large-scale IT, IT projects, both public sector and financial services clients. He had been based in London, and he's now based in Newcastle. So Chris, thank you very much. <laughs> So before I start and, and talk about what I did um, at university, which I've got a bulleted list, so I'll try not just to make this a, a reeling off exercise. Um, I did just want to add kind of my weight behind a lot of what Bob said and a lot of what, what, the, what the conversations were this morning around what we're looking for within Accenture. Obviously, you know, we've talked about SMEs and I've been involved in some SMEs that I'll talk about uh, later on. But in terms of the sorts of skills and the sorts of experience and that, that piece about the, the being prepped at the careers fairs couldn't be more important. I'm fairly sympathetic, having come from Leicester, but when I got asked what does Accenture do for about the 350th time last autumn when I was at the careers fair, even I was beginning to fray. But I talked to my boss back when I got back at, uh, at, in the office, and he said, well, if anyone asks me that, I'd just tell them to go away straight away. So obviously, my level of patience from being an alumni is, uh, is somewhat higher than his. But equally, it, it is absolutely key. And, you know, Employers aren't going to look at universities where the students aren't ready, where they don't have the skills. We'll go somewhere else. There's plenty of other good universities in the country. And, you know, frankly, particularly in Accenture, there's a few of us who are committed graduates who like being here, appreciate that there are people here who are well-rounded. I was having a conversation with these guys before where I'm, I'm getting graduates coming to me who've been to Durham University, come from a privileged background, have not been exposed to what I would view the real world. They've not... They've not met the sorts of people that they'll come into contact with at somewhere like Leicester, where it's a lot more diverse. I put them in front of a, Geordie, a load of Geordies at a pension centre and go and find out requirements for our new system. It doesn't always go down well. Um, whereas, you know, the sorts of people that come from Leicester, they've had that more diverse experience. They've had that three years of meeting different people. And that makes a huge difference. So I'm really, you know, really passionate that the guys here have got, it, got the right background and the right experience. It's just getting the extra dimension and articulating that extra dimension is, is what I think is missing and why I'm not working with more Leicester graduates on a day-to-day -day basis than I'd like. But those that do get in, you know, sim similar to the case at McDonald's, all the ones that have got in and the people that I've been involved in recruiting have shot through the company. They've got promoted very quickly. They've all done very well. I don't think any of them have left or been asked to leave or anything like that, um, which is quite common in our company. Um, it's, a, it's an up or out kind of culture, so um, they've obviously stayed in. So again, you know, they've all been good fits. That aside, um, I'll talk a little bit about what I managed to do um, while I was here. So I wasn't thinking about employability when I did, when I did all these activities, I should add. I, I just wanted to do them. Um, and it amazes me, actually, I managed to get 2-1 in my degree at the end of it. And I think it's only thanks to the tenacity of some of my tutors that, that I managed to get through, plus 36 contact hours a week always helped, I think, in terms of uh, not getting too distracted. Um, I, I, I dare say if I'd done something with less contact hours, I might not be where I am now. Um, so I came to university, I came to Villiers Hall, the sadly now departed Villiers Hall, um, and they were looking for a, hall, for a, a sort of team there to look after the, the JCR, to run the events, to organise things. I thought that sounded like an interesting opportunity, got elected onto that role, and I didn't know what I'd taken on as, as an 18-year-old I had a team of 10 people. We, had a, we were running balls for the whole, um, the whole hall three times a year. We were booking entertainment. We were negotiating with suppliers. I was trying not to have the team fray out because of, um, because of nerves and the amount of stress. Unfortunately, I did lose two people. Um, but, that's always not in the, in, but that's always actually an excellent answer to the competency-based <laughs> question of, uh, of when have you made a mistake and what did you learn and how did you get past it. So that's my favourite uh, my favourite one for that. So, you know, all these experiences are useful. Um, I then went on, I got involved in the Students' Union, I got involved quite a lot in the world of uh, union politics, um, which, was, which was entertaining and helped out where I could there. Um, the best thing I did, actually, in terms of, um, you know, experience and in terms of getting through interviews, was actually organising the Rag Beer Festival for two years running. Um, which sounded at the time like a brilliant gig. It would, I would assume, mostly involved me drinking, drinking lots of free beer. But actually, it turned out to be one of the most difficult things I, I've done while I was here, in terms of the coordination, 
in terms of, again, man- dealing with about 40 different breweries, guys who brew in their backyards up in Rutland, trying to deal with them and get them to give us the beer for free or as close to free as we could get, spending a huge amount of Rags charity money in advance to buy all this and taking that risk on and persuading them that we were competent enough that we could have twice as much money as they spent last year and it would be successful. The negotiation and, and the uh, event management and people management skills in terms of the volunteers was huge. Um, and I did it for a second year running and actually each time we did it, we, we, we doubled the taking. So um, it was a very successful event. Um, I was staff student rep as well, so a lot of people have touched on that. And I think really that's a key early intervention. If people are just you know, talking to you as academics within your department, they're not thinking about the students' union, not thinking about clubs and societies, actually that's a good starting point for people. And particularly now, it's a lot more formal than when I was here. You've got the Leicester Award in place that helps people to understand what they're doing, helps them to develop in that role and to articulate it. I think that's a great starting point. Um, for people. Um, finally, I was uh, I, I did get elected student union president. I don't want to dwell too much on that because I got my job actually before I got elected. I thought I'd uh, get the graduate role and then defer for a year if I was successful, and fortunately I was. Obviously, in terms of university involvement, to me that's the gold standard. You know, you're running a running a multi-million pound organisation. Um, you've got a lot of responsibility there, and that's a and that is a great role. Um, there's plenty of other opportunities, I think, within the Students' Union that, that allow people to have that exposure. In between that, I did have some work experience as well. Um, I Actually, similar to, uh, similar to the last speaker, I, I had a role working in, I, just working in IT support with the, uh, the local lawnmower company, um, and I managed to maintain that throughout my studies, uh, go back and develop that. I was very keen on doing a placement between the second and third year, and again, you know, in terms of we talked about a lot about that, that the percentage of interns that get taken on full time within my organisation, summer placements and internships are both great try before you buy opportunities for us. And it literally, I, I've had a few summer placement students work for me, a few interns, literally at the end of it, I'll get sent a form by HR and there's just two tick boxes, employ or do not employ. Um, I've, I've yet to tick the do not employ, we seem to do fairly well in terms of the interns that we take on. But that's it, they'll get an offer and then they'll come and work for us. Um, I, didn't get, um, I didn't get the Accenture internship, actually, um, funnily enough. Um, the numbers that, at that time were quite low. I think there were about 17 interns, and we took on about 800 graduates. So it was obviously, obviously a very competitive process, but that's changed now. And I think due to the success of the internships and summer placement programmes, so those have both been expanded um, significantly. I have to say I, wasn't that, I didn't apply for that because I was encouraged to do so by my department or by the university or by the, um, by the employer, actually, to be honest, the, the pay for the internships was all quite good and the sort of thing I was looking at. So I think that was as much of a, a draw as anything else. Um, so a lot, of the, a lot of what I've talked about here has been more, more things I've done because, because I wanted to. Um, so between my second and third year, I applied for the um, STEP programme, which I think is still running. I had a look at the website the other day. Um, it's the, it was called the Shell Technology and Enterprise. I think it's not Shell anymore, but they've kept the acronym. But that's a, that was a, a great opportunity where you get placed within small businesses um, to do a piece of project work and for me that was kind of the culmination of, of my work experience and my outside experience because that was an opportunity to manage a project end-to-end -end, on your own for eight weeks and that was a huge range I was doing IT because that was my background but there were marketing projects there were all manner of different projects and different work and that again is a great scheme so between what I did there, what I did, what I did for my work experience, and what I did at university, and I think that obviously gave me gave me the extra dimension. But I think Stu was as Stu was pointing out when he was looking at the at the diagram earlier, I probably covered most of what was in there, um, but I didn't need to. I mean, I, I did that because I wanted to, and that's because that's what I enjoyed doing. But but ultimately, even if I covered off one or two of those things, a bit of work experience, being a course rep. That would have been more than enough, or organising the beer festival on its own probably would be more than enough to get you get through the sort of competency-based interviews that most of the big employers use these days, um, and that gave me the opportunities to to be where I am. So, just to kind of conclude, I think you know, as, as I've alluded that, I think things are changing and things do have to change. There was no intervention for me. There was no one within the university saying to me. You, know, you need to go and do these things, you need to go and think about work experience, you need to think about external opportunities outside of your course. And I think that, that really has to change. And, and for a lot of my, my colleagues on my course who've, who've not 
been involved in that sort of process. If, if it is the, you know, it's the academics that are that first point of contact. If people don't go and seek out the students' union, don't go and seek out other things, it really is you guys that have got to, to start people on that journey. It's not difficult just to say, what else are you doing? Have you thought about all these different opportunities? And equally, you know, I think people need to you'd start understanding what those opportunities are and looking actually, what does the Students' Union do? Talk to the, we've got the sabbatical officers here at the front today. Talk to them about the sorts of opportunities that, that your students could get involved in. Um, you know, clubs and societies, there's a, there's a huge, massive range of opportunities the union offers. And I'm really passionate and I think that that's the place where between that and looking at the work experience and looking at the, the whole picture, I think that's how graduates get the extra, not extra factor, I'll get it right. Extra dimension, yes. <laughs> Excellent. So I'll leave it there. Thank you.